Here again at the 2013 World Angus Forum in Rotorua and with me a geneticist by the name of Mr. Jerry Taylor from the US. Not always from the US, Jerry. No, I've got a pretty long and checkered history. So I was born in England and then my parents immigrated to Australia when I was four years old. Grew up in Australia and went to school there. My family is still there in Adelaide. Um, yay, the hometown. Nice place. And beautiful place and loved it there and um, just ended up uh, doing a PhD in Armidale at Animal Genetics and Breeding Unit, one of the top genetics groups in the world. Give them a plug. And, uh, and then after that I ended up uh, in the US to do a postdoc and one thing came to another and I ended up basically staying there and working there. So I've been at Texas A&M University and I've uh, now been at the University of Missouri for about the last 11 years. How do you enjoy it over there? Good? It's, it's really great. Um, you know, um, you know, the Americans sometimes get a tough, tough deal from down under, um, but it's a wonderful country. The people are friendly. They really um, feel very strongly ab about um, freedom and democracy, and, and yeah. they've done a lot. If you look at the history of the country, they've done a lot in the last 50, 60 years to try to make sure that the world has been free. So I, I enjoy living in that environment. Yeah. Now, the lot that you were talking about today, about the DNA, What's all the work you're doing at the moment? Um, to actually sequence uh, 150 different bulls from uh, nine different breeds of cattle that are the most numerically important to beef production in the US. And the idea is, is that by sequencing these animals, we can find what we call broken genes. So these are mutations that have occurred in genes that cause them to actually just lose their function. Yeah. Um, most of these things, um, we, we don't know very much about what they do, but some of them uh, cause defects. So, you know, we've seen some genetic defects in the Angus breed over the last four or five years. They're caused by broken genes. But it also turns out that some of these broken genes impact fertility of cattle. So if you produce an embryo that has two copies of a broken gene, it basically fails to develop, fails to implant, fails to go full term, fails to produce a calf, uh, and you end up with basically a reproductive failure. Um, yeah. And what we think is that probably somewhere between about 5 and 7% uh, of all pregnancies just don't make it because of the presence of these broken alleles. So what we're trying to do is, is work out um, a, a clever way to find these quickly um, and then to be able to develop tests for them so that we can we can utilize those tests to help improve fertility within the beef cattle population. Are you getting the system sped up? Is it working? Yeah, we, we've actually spent about three or four years working in dogs. So I work with a comparative medical, medical group uh, on the campus of the University of Missouri that's interested in using dogs as models for human neurological diseases. So it turns out that dogs get Lou Gehrig's disease. Dogs get um, um, uh, different uh, epilepsies, forms of epilepsy, seizure disorders, that, yeah. exactly the same as humans do, and they get them because they've got broken genes. And so we actually started this process going down this road, sequencing dogs that had genetic defects so that we could actually identify what the gene was and then move towards actual therapies, actually replacing the enzyme that's lost in the brains of these dogs so to see if we could actually make them better, stop having, disease, uh, having the, the seizures. Um, and in fact, we've had one really good success in that with a, a disorder that's, that's called CLN. Um, and we've actually been able to cure dogs that have two broken copies of the gene that normally would end up having seizures, and we can actually treat them so that they just don't have, have uh, seizures anymore. So to do that, we ended up having to build a very complex um, analysis pipeline for the data. So generating the data is actually really easy. All you've got to do is take a DNA sample to a DNA core and give it to them and write them a check and, and yeah. two weeks later you're going to have a truck full of data coming down that area and, and what you've got to do is then figure out how to use it. So we spent about three years building the analysis platform to analyze you know, these dog data and once we got that built and we got things running for dogs, we said, you know, let's, let's move on to cattle and start applying this in cattle. So now we're at the point that there's nothing slowing us down in terms of analyzing the data. It's just a question of how fast we can generate it um, and how fast we can pay to generate it because it still costs about $4,600 to actually do a genome sequence on an animal. So the 150 animals that we're sequencing, you know, we've got an investment of $750,000 to get that done. 
but it's also co-sponsored by breed associations. Oh yeah. So our, our USDA has put about two thirds of the money in, and um, breed associations from New Zealand and Australia um, and um, Argentina um, are also co-sponsoring this work, as well as a bunch from the US. Um, and uh, in the last six months, we've sequenced uh, another 75 animals. So. We'll have the whole thing done by probably March. Uh, we'll have all of these bulls sequenced by March and then the analysis will be run simultaneously and we'll have everything we need to go to the next step, which is going to be building a genotyping assay that we put the most severe looking mutations on. Oh, yeah. And the reason we want to do that is the fact that we identify all of these DNA mutations, we don't know what they do. And so we want to know which ones in there cause reproductive loss and the easiest way to do that is to get a big mob of cattle together. And in our case, we're going to get 10,000 heifers. Um, we've already got half of them rounded up. We've got 5,000 of them in place. They're all Angus. We're going to genotype them with this assay, and we're just going to ask the question, which of these polymorphisms, these mutations, never turn up in two copies? Because if they turn up in two copies, they're not lethal. If they never turn up in two copies, it means the embryos that got that never survived to make one of these heifers. So it's a pretty simple test to actually identify the things that are having direct impacts on fertility. So what are the economic effects of, of genetic defects for, for a breeder? Well, genetic defects are something that we're never going to escape. And, and they're a consequence of the fact that we have selection programs running to try to improve growth rates and carcass composition um, in our cattle. And so what you see is, an, and Dorian Garrick that presented just uh, after oh, me yeah. today, presented some data to show that Angus um, are making the greatest genetic progress in terms of growth rate um, of any of the breed, as breed associations in the US. Now the way they're doing that is that they're identifying um, the elite bulls in the population that have the right genes, the right genetics to enhance their growth rate and they're using relatively small numbers of bulls in the population. When you do that, you concentrate the good alleles that those bulls are carrying for growth and carcass composition into the population. Anything bad that those bulls are carrying, like defects, also get concentrated into the population. Now what you can say is that the, you know, there's been a lot of economic analysis done that shows that the, the benefits you get to selection far outweigh um, the negatives you get from uncovering these, these defects. Um, but they're an emotional thing for breeders. You know, when breeders start seeing you know, cattle that carry alleles that create defects, it hits them personally, it hits them emotionally, and they want to be able to manage those defects along with um, being able to select cattle to make them more efficient uh, producers. So the, the value of this technology of what we're doing is that we can identify rapidly these, these defects that, that are in the population because we're sequencing the bulls that are being used heavily and then secondly, what we can do is we can actually develop software, um, and in this project that I'm working on uh, for these fertility loci, we will have software that our producers can use so that they can load the genotypes from these 10,000 heifers that we're, geno that we're genotyping. They can load the genotypes from the bull population in there, and they can say, how do I manage which bull to breed to which cow so that I get my end result of more carcass, more growth, um, more carbs due to improving fertility, and less defects. In other words, I want to make sure that animals that carry the same defect alleles don't get mated to each other. Yeah. And so that's the tool that will be imperative to making all of this work. So sequencing all of these animals is a very nice scientific exercise, and we'll learn a lot about what it is that yeah. an Angus is. But to help the breeders actually manage these defects, the important thing is to develop the computer programs that will be available through websites, possibly through the breed association, get cheap DNA tests out there so that the cattle can be tested, and then they can actually put all of that, upload all of that from the breed associations into this software and figure out how to make cows to bulls so that you minimize seeing these things. Yeah. We can select them out of the population, and while we're selecting these things out of the population, we can make sure we don't produce any more calves that have defects. Yeah. Well, thank you very much.